Monday, the NFL playoffs begin with the NFC Wild Card Game. All here Christmas weekend on CBS Sports. Well, fans of the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers are getting help this afternoon, Irv, from the Cincinnati Bengals. Right now, the Bengals are dominating the Lions. Eddie Murray has kicked a field goal, but it is 14-3. That's a tough-looking little footy cat over there. But the big cat is this fella, Pete Johnson. Irv, he'd be impossible to stop. And then, of course, from Monty Clark of the Lions, there was this moment. Botch snap, and wouldn't you know it, Anderson scooped it up. Got the first down. Now, he took a blow to the head. He was knocked out of the game, and he hasn't come back. But Irv, Turk Schoenert can do the important thing for the Bengals when you get down inside the five. Yeah, hand the ball off to Pete Johnson. Look at this. A battering ram. Sports his way in there from three yards out. He just can't stop him. He's got to weigh more than 300 pounds. I don't believe the 275. Seattle and the Giants. Another woeful season coming to an end for the New York Giants. They are being pounded by the Seahawks, 17 to 6. Jimmy the Greek has reported the Giants are interested in hiring the Miami Hurricane coach, Howard Schnellenberger. New Orleans and Philadelphia. It is 7-3. The Saints lead the Eagles. They are in the third quarter of that game. Cleveland and Houston, perhaps the most surprising game of the day. The Oilers, until just a few moments ago, had dominated the Browns all game long. Mike Pruitt has fumbled twice for the Browns in that game, and the Oilers lead it 24 to 13. San Francisco and Buffalo. The Bills have just kicked a field goal by Joe Donello. It is now 10-6. Those are Polaroids that Joe Ferguson studied of the defensive formations being used by the 49ers. But this was the big play. Joe Cribbs, 45 yards, the longest Bills run of the season, and it set up a touchdown, and the man who did it was up over the top, Roosevelt Leaks. Maybe he's not as good Walter Payton over the top, but he still got high enough to get the touchdown, and it is now 10-6, the Bills with the lead in that one. And, of course, the Chicago Bears and the Minnesota Vikings, the game you're watching, and the one thing about Matt Suey on this play, Irv, he really camouflaged what he was about to do. Everybody thought this was a run. Watch this, stepping up to the line of scrimmage, Hold up. Perfect strike to Walter Payton. 74 yards later, Walter dances into the end zone. Usually when those running backs are going to throw, they'll move to the sideline. He actually moved upfield, and that just simply drew up the cornerback. We're going to take a look at the Washington-Dallas, the game, when the NFL Today continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations. <laughs> Still ahead of us on CBS, the game. That's all I have to say. Washington against Dallas. Texas Stadium already starting to fill up, and I'm surrounded by a pair of experts now to analyze that action for you. Nice to have the coach, Dick Vermeil, with us Thank here you. in New York. And Jimmy the Greek, of course, we've been waiting all week to see who you're going to pick. The weather is beautiful. Are we in for a high-scoring or a low-scoring game? I imagine about three touchdowns for each team and a field goal late, but I'll tell you later by whom. All right, let's put Dick on the spot right. first. Dick, who do you like to win this game? Brent, I like the Redskins, and the reason I like them, they play more consistently up to their ability each time I've seen them. They have always played good football. Let's take the folks inside and show them some of the reasons why you like the Redskins. How about number 72, Dexter Manley? Well, Dexter Manley is their best upfield rusher, and Pat Dunneman, number 67 today, is going to have his hands full. Now, at the top of your screen, you're going to see Pat Dunneman, the left tackle, number 67, pass protecting Dexter Manley. And he is capable of pass protecting him, but he's going to get deep into the backfield and force that quarterback to step up into those big defensive tackles. Dick, do they work a lot of tricks with Manley and try to loop him through the middle still? Oh, they do. They do a lot of stunning, like all teams do, but that won't be the key. The key will be the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Irv Cross took that close look at the Hogs, Washington's offensive line in the pregame show. What kind of blocking do they favor to open a hole for a John Riggins? Well, first off, they're big and physical, all offensive tackles, and then they come off together real well, knocking people out of there. But they also co-op block better. Now, you watch the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, number 53, Jeff Bostic, the center, and Russ Grimm coming off on Randy White at the left of your screen, 54. Now you see Russ Grimm coming off on Bob Brunig, number 53. A combination, combination block executed. Here comes Riggins going to squirt through the hole that Bob Brunig, number 53, was supposed to get to. Now it's turned loose on a safety, and Riggins on a safety is a mismatch. Dick, of course, the Cowboys have that awesome defensive line. What's the one matchup today that could really get the Redskins in trouble? 
Well, whenever you have to block too tall with one guy, it's going to be a problem. And George Stark, number 74, right in the middle of the screen, is going to have some problems physically. I think he can pass protect him, but he's going to get penetration. And now that six foot eight guy gets up in the air. He's like throwing over a telephone pole. But still and all, even down there in Texas, you think the Redskins are going to prevail? I think they can beat him. All right. Jimmy, do you agree with the coach? I agree what he said about that young man on the outside, too tall Jones, of what he's going to do. I'll tell you, all coaches, Brent, pick pick the Redskins, 14 of them. You know, they're the pure team. They tackle, they block, they play straight football. Dallas, of course, flexes a little bit, you know, goes around in, throws a flea flicker. I mean, they try to trick you. Now, I'll tell you this, the quarterback and special teams definitely go to the Redskins, but the speed, Dorsett has more speed and he'll break the team quicker. I mean, he'll make a longer gain than Riggins will. That defensive line of the Redskins, has, or rather of the Cowboys, has a better pass rush. And there isn't any question in my mind about that because too tall is super. And I'll tell you, that home advantage today is going to be big because they're going to be yelling Texas loud today. That Cowboy's going to win this one big, Greg? No, but they're going to win it. Uh, you two got dinner on this? Do I get to come along? Well, he's already volunteered to buy dinner. Here. All right. Still ahead of us, the game. But right now, we've got the second half coming up. So let's send you back to the stadium. Here at the Metrodome, the Bears with a 10-point lead after Minnesota had led early on a pair of Benny Ricardo field goals in the first quarter. The Bears have moved in front, Johnny, and uh, as we can see, they moved in front statistically as well. Yes, uh, total yards is pretty close, but I think the key is the Vikings only have 24 yards rushing, and if you can't run the ball, you know, you can't do much in the way of uh, setting up passes, and that's been the key. The Bear defense has played pretty good football. Well, and we've had some big plays, too. Of course, the Vikings throwing the ball on their very first play downfield that uh, resulted in a, an interference situation where they were able to uh, to move on in and get their first field goal. And then we saw Matt Suey, uh, not known as one of the great passers in the NFL, make a 74-yard score to Walter Payton. If you, uh, I, if you check, Payton has, what, three touchdown passes? Suey now has one. I don't think any NFL team in history has had two running backs go like they have as far as the passing game is concerned but that's been a key that really gave the Bears that impetus because they were down six nothing at the time well good things have happened for Bears fans in the other games you got the scores there uh, San Francisco is trailing Detroit helping the Minnesota cause they're trailing Cincinnati uh, the only one that's going against both the Vikings and the Bears so far is the fact that uh, the Saints are leading the Eagles at halftime so we'll be tracking those scores and uh, We'll be back here to follow the rest of this football game in Minneapolis with the Bears leading 16 to 6. We'll be